please welcome Professor De Luca. Thank you very much, Bruno, for your introduction. I think that it's time to close this uh, important meeting you had in these days with uh, some uh, crucial aspect like the neuroscience funding and the relationship between all our uh, community and the policymakers and major stakeholders. So the general idea is that I just send a few ideas to set the floor for the discussion with the panelists. And I just like, would like to start immediately in saying that I guess we all agree that brain research is an excellent niche worldwide. It's a very rapidly evolving area of research, is steadily and increasingly at the front, forefront of science. But despite all our step forward in trying to understand the complexity of the brain, we all know that basic research, fundamental research, applied research, all breadth of research in neuroscience is still highly needed for our full understanding of the still unknown basic function of the nervous system. And I will insist a lot on the concept of understanding the basic function of the brain and not only the disease, uh, the causes of the diseases in the brain. So basically we have a a level of complexity in brain research. We have the complexity of understanding the brain function that brings us in front of responsibility, but also opportunities. Responsibility because through our curiosity-driven research, through new technologies, we have the responsibility to develop maybe novel tools and approach in order to integrate and advance our knowledge on the brain, but also opportunities because we can provide a better understanding of the pathogenesis, maybe, of the different diseases, different brain diseases, and to generate novel therapeutic approaches for those diseases. And indeed, this is a challenge to respond to a crucial challenge. And we are talking about the challenge because if we look now at numbers, and I think that numbers are relevant in, the, in this setting for our discussion. If we look at the cost in general of brain diseases in Europe, this has been estimated by a study of European Brain Council in 2011 and with a revision last year. Uh, this has been estimated to a total cost, annual cost, of almost 800 billion euros. These are big numbers and an extremely huge burden for our society. And when we talk about 800 billion euros, we are talking about indirect cost and direct cost altogether. So the cost of the uh, drugs and assistance, but also the cost of our family and the burden of our societies. Of course, the cost varies a lot among the different diseases. This study comprised almost 19 brain diseases with epidemiological studies and uh, um, socioeconomic studies um, carried out in 27 member states of Europe. So it's really a highly comprehensive burden. And we also tried to identify which are the most costly brain diseases in Europe lately, and we identified at least 12 that are really imposing a huge burden to the European society. And among them, of course, the mental diseases, mental disorders, which are the first highest uh, costly disease in Europe in all different member states, and dementia and in general, neurodegenerative diseases. So we are really facing big challenges here, and we need to respond to the challenge that is posed by the society. So if we look at the issue at stake in the brain research in general, we can say that understanding the brain and its disease remain one of the grand challenge for the future years, and this is one point for our discussion. We have a highly complex and multidisciplinary research in front of us, and I think we all can agree on the complexity of brain research here. We have a cost, brain disease constitute a major burden. We are talking about 1.5 million per minute in Europe. And we have also another big challenge because Europe's population is getting older. This is a big good news for everybody, but it's also uh, a challenge again. Because we know that, for example, in Europe by 2025, the 20% of European citizens will be 65 years over, older. 
This means that we are really dealing with a number of diseases which are related to the aging population. So we are really facing a major societal challenge for the coming years. So the numbers that I just gave to you are set to grow in the future. If we look simply in, in dementia, which is, uh, I'm a little bit biased because I'm working on these kind of diseases. So if we look at the prospective study uh, on dementia in Europe, if we are talking now about um, 7 million patients in Europe, by 2030, we can double this number. The same situation in the US, I can show you the data. If we look now in 2010 and then we have a prospect in 2050, if we do not invest in basic research to try to understand the basic functioning of the brain and then to apply this funding to dementia, the number of patients in these uh, 30 years from now is also set to double in the States. But I just would like to show you one data, and this is also a prospective study, because the question was, what happens if we delay the progression of the, and the onset of the disease of only five years in the US? How can we change the numbers? How can we curb the numbers? And the results of this prospective study is really impressive. If we do invest in a sense that we are able to get new results, new understanding, new knowledge on dementia, then the total number of patients in the US that was prospected to be 15 million will decrease to 7.5 million with a respective decrease also in the funding and in the social burden of the society. So we do have a challenge and we need to adapt ourselves to this challenge, but we also know that Tackling societal challenge and making breakthrough discoveries is not a linear process. And therefore, what is needed in brain research is support for science and its innovation as an holistic system. And we need to um, support the full breadth of neuroscience research from curiosity driven to the more applied technological research. So uh, we discussed this with our policymakers extensively in the European arena, and we had a, a very good feedback from and a very good response from the European Commission in the previous framework program, which is the program that is set to fund European research um, in, in the last years. And as you know, the seven frame program is almost uh, complete now, is, uh, is the proceeding from the Horizon 2020, which is the current program, but discussing these sort of challenges in brain research with the European Commission made brain research in the seven framework program a priority. And at the end of the seven framework program, we realized together with the Commission that more than 2.5 billion were allocated and dedicated to brain-related research since 2007. So this was a big success because definitely both the policymakers and the community reacted together to a typical challenge. And of course, the framework program was not the only one measure that was taken by policymaker at European level in a general way, but this was the first uh, part of it because, of course, we have different funding measures now that are. Uh, set and dedicated to neuroscience research. The era, I just listed a few of them, maybe some of you are, um, I'm sure also our panelists will be familiar for that and maybe can discuss uh, a few points of it. The era and neuron, the joint programming on neurodegenerative diseases, the Romer that is setting the, the roadmap for mental illnesses in Europe, but the, many other initiatives, including an increasing interest on neuroscience research, also on the um, IMI, which is the public-private initiative. So it is led by private companies, but is followed up by academic uh, laboratories. On the other hand, these are public funding. On the other hand, a very important point in the last few years, as uh, Bruno already alluded at the beginning of this uh, uh, session, in the last few years, several pharmaceutical companies reduced or completely closed their neuroscience R&D facilities. That was because of the low, lower perspective of return on investment, clearly. 
However, despite all this effort, I, have, I just would like to show a few more data because the community reacted in the last 10 years, and the scientific community, and reacted very well. And I just would like to allude to a brain report that was just published together with a number of uh, uh, scientific society, including FENS by Elsevier. The, I just would like to mention to all of you today that the 16% of the world output, of the world scientific output, is still neuroscience. So this means that the effort of the scientific community on neuroscience is extremely high. And if we look and we consider the papers and the good papers as the major outcome of our research, again, we can see that Europe and US, of course, are the most uh, uh, prophetic countries in brain research, but then we have China coming in, and we have uh, Duan Ximin today for this uh, discussion for this panel. So I think that the scientific community worldwide got a boost from this public funding and then reacted accordingly to the challenges. But we should not stop because this is not still enough. So in our opinion, in fans' opinion, in my personal opinion, we need to foster a continued support to open basic brain research with the ambition to increase European and cross-sectoral research collaboration, keeping in mind that research excellence needs to be balanced by a complementary focus on policy priorities, societal challenges, and emerging lead technologies. And I think this is a really a crucial part for our discussion. So I think that we have the best panel ever to, to foster this discussion and this uh, uh, open the discussion. And I would like to invite all my panelists here.